Hey, we are going to talk about deploying FastAPI apps with HTTPS powered by traffic. So first, who am I? I'm Sebastian Ramirez or Tiangulo. I'm a software developer at Explosion in Berlin, Germany. Explosion are the creators of SPACI, the natural language processing package, Prodigy, the tool for doing data annotation with active learning, Think, a deep learning framework using type annotations, and I created FastAPI and Typer. So this is what we're going to talk about. You can also find me on GitHub, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So we are going to uh, discuss and talk about FastAPI with Docker. We are going to build an application with FastAPI with Docker. Then we're going to deploy it on DigitalOcean on a server from scratch. And we are then going to put traffic on top and uh, we are going to add HTTPS to that. So when you deploy an application to a remote server, you should always have HTTPS because it will encrypt the communication between your clients and users and the server. And HTTPS is actually just HTTP, the same protocol that you are used to for web uh, applications, uh, running through or going through a secure connection using TLS or SSL. SSL was the old name, TLS is the new name. If you want to know a, a, a bit more about HTTPS, I would recommend you go to this website, How HTTPS Works. This is a funny webcomic that shows all the technical details that you need to know as a developer. And then we are going to use traffic to get those HTTPS certificates because the way HTTPS works is that, let's go to this website. If you see uh, this lock here and that it says the connection is secure, this is because of HTTPS. And this is because this website has a certificate that we can check here. And this certificate is the thing that uh, give certainty to the users and clients that this website is uh, who it claims to be. And these certificates are provided by a third party. In this case, it's Let's Encrypt. So you cannot simply just turn HTTPS on or like add a simple configuration to just have HTTPS. There's actually a lot of logic that uh, has to go underneath for it to actually work. Let's Encrypt is this awesome organization that provides TLS certificates for free. Uh, TLA certificates are these certificates that we were seeing, like this one. And these certificates are what uh, powers HTTPS underneath. And then traffic, which is what we are talking about, uh, has support, integrated support for acquiring those certificates with Let's Encrypt and renewing them and uh, managing them automatically uh, for you. Because if you see these certificates, they always have this expiration date. So they, they have a short time uh, lifespan. And there's logic that needs to be added to handle uh, the renewal of those certificates to keep everything working. And Traffic can do all that for us. So that's what we are going to see. And then we are going to see how to add basic out for any type of web application simply using Traffic. So we'll be able to add authentication for things like uh, not just fast API applications, but also things like Streamlit or uh, panel uh, applications that use bokeh visualizations uh, with pandas and stuff like that. And we will be able to add basic authentication for that so that you can deploy your applications on a public server that other users can, can see, but then also have it uh, with authentication and properly secure. So we are going to do all these live. So let's start coding. The first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to create a virtual environment here. So let me open the terminal. I have this empty project and we are going to create a virtual environment with Python 3.8. I'm calling it .env 3.8. I'm going to say yes, I want you to detect that this is a virtual environment and use it. Now I have the new a binary uh, pip on Python. So I'm going to use that. First, I have to activate it. So the environments.m, blah, 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 being activated. So I have the new virtual environment activated here. The next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to upgrade pip so that I have the latest version of pip installed before installing every, anything else. This is a good practice to, to implement 
you might be using another tool. You might be using Poetry or Conda or using uh, requirement files. We are just going to do the simplest thing and just install everything with it. Now we're going to install FastAPI and Ubicorn, as you can see here. Because these are the tools that we're going to use. We're going to make a very simple uh, FastAPI application. So I'm just going to bring it here. It's a very simple default FastAPI application. This is a complete FastAPI application, and we're just going to run that. That is what we are going to use for a for our example. We're not going to do much more with FastAPI, but we are going to learn how to deploy a FastAPI application to a remote server. So having that, I can start a local server with Ubicorn with this command. This first, let me hit, yeah. This first app here refers to this directory app. Then .main refers to this file main.py then colon and then the second app refers to this app variable or this app object that's what this line means now I'm going to run that and this says that it's running on this uh, IP address and this port if I open this uh, let me go here and open a new tab and open this address you can see that the app that we created is working uh, and it's yeah it's working properly and because this is a fast api application we can go to the interactive documentation app slash docs and we can see that we get this automatic interactive api documentation we can even interact with our api we get the message that we were expecting and everything is working correctly so nice that that's working great up to that point Let's stop this server and I'm going to now add everything uh, here to git. So I'm going to create a git repository. I have a git ignore file that ignores all the files that we don't need to add to git. So I'm going to add this git ignore and I'm going to add the main code that we have to git. First commit, that will be the message for this first commit. Cool. Now we have a git repository with our first basic application. So up to now, this is just FastAPI. This is all working locally. Great. What are we going to do now? Now, we want to uh, create this server on a, uh, create this application on a remote server. So we are going to create that remote server. Let me go here. We're going to go to DigitalOcean. I have this project, FastAPI with traffic, which is what we're going to do. And then I'm going to create a new server. So they call them droplets. This is just a remote server. This is what we are going to use. I can use the default Ubuntu. It's just a basic server. I don't need one this big. I'm, can, I can use one of 10 bucks a month, so that's fine. I'm currently in Germany, so I'm going to select Frankfurt and I'm going to enable my personal SSH key so that we can uh, log in easily. I can leave everything else by default and I can just start this server this droplet as they call it so this is now creating that server and we can actually go there and see it already has an a, a public ip so we are going to use this public ip to create a to make the domain that we're going to use map to this server so now what we are going to do is that we are going to go again to the project and i have this domain set up here that currently only has the default configurations, but now I'm going to say, hey, whenever someone goes to the domain fastapi with traffic.tangler.com, so I'm going to say at, which is the keyword for saying this domain, I want them to communicate with the server that I just created, which is this one. I could select an IP here instead of just the drop-down, but uh, DigitalOcean detects that I just created this server, so it's auto-completed. I'm going to create this. Uh, this record here. Now I'm gonna add another one, which is this asterisk or a wildcard, which means any subdomain of fastapi with traffic to .com, and it should also point to the same server. I'm gonna add this one. So now we have the domain set up to communicate with that server. Now the next that we the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to connect to that server. So I'm going to go here back 
to the to the terminal and I'm gonna move myself to this corner and I'm gonna uh, split this window and I'm gonna connect to that remote server with SSH so I'm saying SSH root which is the name of the root user at and I can put here instead of putting the IP address I can put the domain because I already set up the domain so let's see if that works the DNS domain sometimes takes some time to replicate the configurations but it seems that it already got uh, the domain correctly because we have never connected to this server uh, then it's going to ask me hey do you trust this server do you want to connect to it I don't recognize that and of course you won't recognize it because we just created it great now we are here inside of the new server that was that we just created let's actually go there and confirm that it says that the ubuntu server this is actually well it's safe creating but it's actually already up and running yeah you can see that is everything ready awesome now what we are going to do is that we are going to tell this server hey i want you to update with this command we are telling it i want you to update the list of packages available so we so uh, you have the list of the latest versions available uh, this doesn't install the new packages this doesn't upgrade the current packages it only uh, updates the list of available packages now with this command which is not update but upgrade now we are going to tell it hey upgrade everything i want you to have uh, all the latest versions of the packages that you already have installed so i'm gonna say yes install all that great so that's installing and with that we will end up with a new server that start we started from scratch with all the latest security patches and all the latest versions of the default uh, packages that it comes with so awesome when that finishes we are going to do the next thing with our code we're going to add a couple of files here so we're going to add this file, docker file, and this is the file that we are going to use to create a docker image with our application. So I'm, I'm using the official docker image for FastAPI, and we just have to copy this directory app inside of the slash app directory inside of the container. That's all we have to do. And we are going to create this other file docker ignore which is very similar to git ignore you can see that it has the same content this what it, this does is that docker won't send all the possible files including this huge uh, environment to docker for it to build the image it will just send the rest of the files which is just our code so it will be much faster than if we just sent everything now i'm gonna run a docker image with that i'm gonna create a docker image using this command docker build then the dash t means what is the tag of the image that i'm creating so the name of the image which is just gonna be app and i'm telling it hey do it on this local directory so i'm gonna hit that and then docker is gonna go check in this local directory detect that there's a docker file and use the information in that docker file to create a new docker image and now i can use the docker image that was created you can see that it's using the uh, base image and then it's copying the files that we declared now i can run a container with this docker image and then it docker run then dash it i remember this it as interactive terminal that it means something else the thing is that this is going to show us the uh, what is happening inside of the container on the terminal instead of just uh, running without showing us anything else and we are telling it hey we want you to map a port we want the port 5000 in my local machine to be the port 80 inside of the, the container this means that when i hit enter here it's gonna start listening to requests in port 80 as it says here in port 80 and here it says listening at blah, blah 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 port 80 let me move this a little bit so we can see that yeah here listening at in port 80 but this 80 is inside of the container and we told docker to map 
the port 80 inside of the container to the port 5000 uh, outside of the container. So the port 5000 in my local laptop. So we are going to go to this address. No, not to a uh, not to the one with not to the one with uh, port 8. We are going to go to the port 5000, which is this one that wasn't loading anything. If I reload, now I get our application. So great, this is running inside of Docker. I can go to the slash docs to get the documentation, the interactive uh, Swagger UI documentation. We can execute, everything is working, nice. If I stop the Docker container with control C, then if I come back and reload, then it's no longer loading because the container is no longer running. So cool, that's working. Now we're going to add these two files to Git. Uh, Docker will be the commit message. Now, what we need to do is that we are going to install Docker on the remote server. This is going to take a bit. Uh, because it was waiting for my input. But now it's going to finish in a second. The next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to install Docker and then we're going to also install Docker Compose because we are going to use Docker Compose to handle all the configurations that we need. As we did here with Docker run, blah, 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 map this port, we're going to need to set a bunch of extra settings like this port. And instead of having to remember all those settings uh, just by memory, we are going to put all those settings in a single file, in a single Docker Compose file, uh, that is going to save us all that time. Uh, so now we are going to... Well, we wait for this to finish. Let's see what else do we have to do. What are the new files that we are going to have here? So we have this new Docker Compose file. Let's check it. This Docker Compose file is going to have these top-level services. So a Docker Compose is mainly a configuration file that uh, you can use to uh, configure several containers that are part of the same stack and have all the configurations and all the settings in a single place so that everything is uh, synchronized. And then Docker Compose can use this file to first build the Docker image and then start the Docker container with configurations like restart. We want it to restart always because if we restart the server, we want the application to still be running and not have to start the application. And if it crashes, then uh, stops running. No, we want Docker Compose to take care of that and restart the application always. And we also uh, are going to map the port 80 inside the port 80 outside of the container. So the port 80 in our remote server to the port 80 inside of the container. So this is the file that we are going to do. But before we do that, let's continue with our server that now finished. We are going to install Docker now in the remote server. So let's go check how to install Docker. We are going to check the documentation. This is just the easiest way to do it. Just go to documentation and follow the steps. We are going to do it for Ubuntu. And they have this great convenience script that does all the steps for us. So we are just going to use that. I'm going to copy the convenience script and I'm going to paste it here. So now we have this file in the remote server. And now we're going to run that convenience script that will install Docker in our server. So I just hit that. Now we can wait for a little. This is going to set up everything to connect to the Docker service to install Docker in that server and have everything set up so that Docker is uh, there and available on the server. It's very simple. Now, while this finishes, let's continue again with our code uh, setting up this Docker Compose file. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to use the command docker com and instead of docker rom blah, 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 now we're going to say docker compose app. That's it. We hit that. And then this is going to check, is there anything new to build? So do I have to build this image again? No, okay, then I'm going to continue and I'm going to start the Docker container with these configurations. And you can see that we get the log with all the settings here and it already started. And now we are not using port 5000 as before. Now we are using port 80, mapping to the port 80 inside of the container. So if we go 
back here to uh, the browser. Instead of using port 5000, we can use port 80, which is the default. So the browser is just going to remove the port because that's the default. And we can see that the application is running. Awesome. That's working. That's great. And we can see that Docker is now installed on the server. So we can now go and install Docker Compose on the server. So let's go check the documentation for that. We are here in Docker and we can go to Docker Compose, Install Compose. And there's also a very similar uh, way to install it. We just have to copy the commands for Linux. So I'm just going to copy this. And we can paste it here in the remote server. Now that just downloads Docker Compose, which is just a single uh, file. Now we have to make it executable so we can use it in the remote server. I'm going to copy that. Yeah, done. And now, before running anything in Docker Compose, we are also going to install this extra, uh, this extra package here called this thing. What this is going to do is that it's going to make sure that uh, our remote server has enough uh, randomness, let's say, that Docker Compose needs. Because the server is very new, it doesn't have enough randomness for Docker Compose to use, and then Docker Compose will hang in there, not executing anything. And now we can say Docker Compose version, and we can see that uh, we get the latest version, and we can say Docker info, and we can see that we have the information of the Docker client, which is the command Docker itself, and the server, which is the thing that is running under underneath doing all the work. So great, that's working correctly. Now uh, that we have this and we have the Docker Compose locally here, we're going to add Docker Compose to Git. Add Docker Compose. This is the message. Awesome. Now the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to create a directory very similar to the one we have here with our project. So I'm going to say make the code. So this is going to create a directory code. So I'm going to get in that directory and I'm going to make another directory that is going to be called the same as our local project. Fast API with traffic. Let me move this a little bit so we can see it on the same thing. Fast API with traffic. I'm going to create that. I'm going to get inside of that. Cool. The next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to copy all the files that we have on this a project to the remote server. I'm going to use the command rsync. Let me move this a little bit so we can see that better. Command rsync can copy the files incrementally. So if it already copied some version, then it can just copy the new files uh, that are necessary. And we are telling it to copy everything in the current directory to the server uh, that is going to be connected using the root user, because we are the root user in the server. At, this is the location of the server using the domain that we just set up and inside of that server it will be in this location which is the location that we just created uh, that we just created inside of the server to hold our code so I'm gonna send all this code there to the remote server great it should be here now if I check I have all the files that I should have in here so that's working correctly that's all now we're gonna do the same that we did locally I'm going to say docker compose app in the remote server. And that is going to first check what does it have to do. The first thing that it has to do is to build the Docker image. And the Docker image is made using the official FastAPI Docker image. So this is going to start by downloading all the Docker layers for that Docker image. And then it's going to, uh, well, download those layers, uncompress them, configure them, and then it's going to add the code that we say, because that's the instruction that we have here in the Docker file. So it has to start uh, from that. Then it's uh, going to copy all that uh, code inside of the Docker image. And then it's going to create the actual Docker image. And then it's going to bring everything up. So this is going to take a little bit. Meanwhile, let's see what else do we have to do here. It's actually taking too long, which is strange. 
I think probably my connection died. So I'm just gonna click this and create a new connection. SSH to this address, great. Now let's get back in that directory. Let's get the traffic. Oh, I'm gonna check with Docker PS. Is there anything running? Yeah, it seems that that thing actually finished running. It's just that my terminal, my connection, uh, crashed for some reason. So now we, uh, now that this thing is running, actually let's say Docker compose app to make sure that we get all the information. Yeah, we can get like all the logs and everything in there. Now that that is running, we can go back to the browser and instead of going to localhost, we're gonna go to a fast API with traffic.tiangulo.com. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go with HTTP, which is the port 80, which is the normal port. And this is redirecting to HTTPS from the previous versions. So now it's doing a Google search. No, that's not what I wanted. I think we're gonna have to do this on an incognito window because uh, when I try the last time, then it remembers that we have HTTPS in the trials. Well, now in uh, the incognito window, it doesn't remember that at some point it had HTTPS. So it's just gonna go and do the right thing and connect to it. Now you can see that it says the connection is not secure. This is because it doesn't have HTTPS and it doesn't have the certificate, but it's working and we can go to the documentation and we can see that it's actually working. We can execute code there. We can send requests to our application and it's working with our domain. So that's working great. Now let's see what else do we have to do now? The next thing that we are going to do is let's check the code here. We are going to change some files. We're going to add some files and change some files. So we're going to add this new file, docker compose .traffic .yml. And this is a new docker compose file. And this one is going to be for traffic. So we are saying, hey, I want to use the latest traffic uh, image version, which is this one. And I want traffic to be the one that listens on port 80. So what we are saying is in the port 80, of the remote server, we want a, we want it to map to the port 80 inside of the container with traffic. And now we're going to check these volumes in a second. The next that we're going to see is that we have this command. This command says, hey, I want you to enable uh, Docker because traffic can communicate through different systems, Docker, Kubernetes, and a bunch of others. And for Docker, I don't want you to expose everything by default because otherwise if we created, for example, a database in the other Docker Compose, then traffic could try to expose it by default to be nice, but then uh, it would actually be a problem for us. So we want to say explicitly, ex explicitly when we want traffic to expose something. And then we are saying, hey traffic, we want you to create an HTTP uh, entry point that is going to use all the addresses on port 80. Then we also enable the access log and the log to see what happens with traffic. We are going to see these networks in a bit, in a second. Now let's check what we changed in the uh, original Docker Compose. Actually, let's, let's see it here. So the original Docker Compose had these ports and that was it. We removed the ports because now the ports are handled by traffic, not by our uh, not by our app. But then we added these labels. So let's see what these labels do. Here's the thing. With traffic, actually, let me switch to this view. And we have traffic on one side and the other on the other side. So with traffic, we have a bunch of configurations that are static. So configurations that don't change over time. Uh, that don't need traffic to be restarted to use those configurations. Those are the ones that we are passing with the command to traffic. Like for example, that we are saying, hey, I want you to listen on port 80. But then traffic also takes other configurations that are dynamic. And those configurations, uh, we are passing them through the labels, through these labels, inside of other 
uh, stacks or Docker Compose stacks. Or if they, these labels will be attached to the Docker containers once we start them. And then traffic is going to read those labels and it's going to take these dynamic configurations and uh, use that to set everything up so that we can uh, have traffic send the requests to this uh, service, to this application. That way traffic can be running and then we can create a new app or even multiple apps and we don't even have to restart traffic for all of them to work at the same time. Traffic will read all those configurations and update anything that's necessary to uh, direct the communication to those applications. Now let's see what these labels mean. So we say that we don't want traffic to expose everything by default. So we have to be explicit that we want to expose to this service. So we are saying, hey, enable traffic for this. And we are saying, hey, traffic, I want you to create a new HTTP uh, service that will be called app. And this app service will have service. This service is a term is different than the service that we use in Docker Compose. So the services in Docker Compose refer to more or less containers and the services in traffic refer to something that can receive requests. We will see an example of how a, something, how a, a container could have more than one service uh, in terms of traffic. So we are saying, hey, this is a listen on port 80 and we wanted to use the entry point called HTTP. This entry point HTTP is the one that we created here on traffic. And we are saying, hey, uh, for this router that we just uh, created that is going to be called app HTTP, I want you to use the rule that whenever the host that is requested is the one with this domain, I want you to send that request to this service. That's what this label is doing. That means that we could actually have different domains on the same server and traffic will be able to handle them and send each request to each specific uh, backend uh, container that is going to handle them. Now, we need a way for traffic to actually be able, so traffic can read all these labels by communicating with Docker. For traffic to be able to communicate with Docker, we need to mount this volume here. So this is the channel of communication between traffic and Docker. So that's the communication channel to get all these labels, to understand like how does it have to configure and to let traffic know that it has to uh, be, uh, be alert to whenever a request comes to this uh, domain, for example. But then we also need a way for traffic to send those requests to the specific container. So that's where the networks come in. We are saying, hey, I want this traffic stack to have uh, to use the following networks. It's just one. It's called traffic public, and this should be external. This, this means that Docker Compose shouldn't try to create a network that is only local to this stack, but, then, but it should use a network that should be created in Docker in general and that multiple stacks can connect to. So we are saying, I want to use this traffic net this uh, traffic public network in this stack and then we have to specify here that the specific service this traffic service is going to use that network because we could actually have multiple services in this stack and each one of them will be connected to different networks and some of those could be public so this is what we are doing here and then we have to connect our backend to the same network so we have the same configuration here and here Great, that's the most important part. Now, uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to copy these files to the remote server with the same command that we used before. So now we are going to stop the current Docker Compose stack and we are going to run Docker Compose with the uh, docker compose traffic configuration file so i'm gonna do that with this command so docker compose because i'm not using the default file that is this one docker compose.yml then i have to specify which specific file i want to use so i'm gonna say docker compose.traffic.yml i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say app 
But then remember that we say that there should be a network that should be public and that should be external. This network doesn't exist yet. And that's the error that we are getting here. So we are going to say docker network create traffic public. So that's going to create that network. Now we can start again with the previous command and it should start traffic. So this is first going to pull the traffic image uh, and extract it and set it up. And then it's going to start the actual traffic container. Now it's started, we can see the first log here. Awesome, that's working. But now we need to be able to start different uh, stacks. So we are going to add an extra configuration here. We are going to add at the end of the command, dash v. This means start this in daemon mode, which means that it's running in the background uh, and it's just gonna keep running there. We don't have to, we don't have to, like we will have this terminal again back to work with it. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to also start our stack, the one with the Docker Compose, with the main Docker Compose that we have. So we are going to do that with this command. So it's the same one, but we are explicitly specifying that we are using this Docker Compose file. We are going to run that, and this is going to run in there. We have to specify the, uh, the explicit Docker Compose file because now we have this extra file Docker Compose overwrite. Here's the thing. Docker Compose will by default use the file Docker Compose, which is this one. Actually, let me show it in this view. So this is the main Docker Compose file. Docker Compose by default is gonna use this file. But then, uh, remember that we removed the ports from the Docker Compose file. So then Docker Compose also uses this Docker Compose override.yml file by default. And this is very useful for development. So we can, during development, we can just say Docker Compose app, and this is gonna take this file and it's gonna use all those configurations and then have those configurations. And on top of those configurations, it's gonna apply these configurations. So it's gonna take these ones and then overwrite them with the file docker compose override and then run that. That way, when we run this locally, we're going to have the stack on port 80. We will be able to use it locally. And because we are setting that traffic public uh, now is not external, only for local development, then this is not going to complain that, hey, this network doesn't exist. That's what this file does. But then because we added that file and we don't want to use that file in the remote server, we have to be explicit with the file that we are going to use. That's why this command here. So great, that should be running now. And what we get is that if we go back to the server and we reload this, this is working. So it actually nothing changed for the final user in the browser. And we did a lot of changes and we just added traffic and we connected traffic with our backend. So great, but we still don't have a lot of use for that. But now with traffic, we will be able to that HTTPS and we have everything wired up to work correctly. So now the thing that we are going to do is that we are going to commit all these files. So I'm going to say add traffic. Yeah. Awesome. Next thing that we need to do is that we are going to add HTTPS. So this is the exciting part. What we need to do to add HTTPS, let's actually start with traffic, with the configurations for traffic. Here are the changes. We are now saying, hey, traffic, I want you to listen on port 80. This is what we had before. Oops, this is what we had before. But we also want traffic to listen port on port 443. This is the default port for HTTPS. We're gonna see this volume in a second. Let's not pay attention to that just yet. Now we are adding the same configurations that we had before, like this one, but now for HTTPS. And we are saying, hey, traffic, this is the key part. I want you to have a certificate resolver. So this is the thing that is going uh, gonna go and talk to Let's Encrypt to get the certificates. I can set up the email that I need. And I, I'm going to say, hey, traffic, I want you to store the traffic, the sorry, the HTTPS certificates that you acquired. I want you to store them in this location. 
So slash certificates slash argument.json. And I want you to use this configuration to communicate with Let's Encrypt to get those certificates. So this is the, the dance that traffic is going to do with Let's Encrypt to say, hey, this is me, I want certificates. And Let's Encrypt will say, hey, hey how do I know that you are you? And then are, they are going to do all this conversation uh, for traffic to convince Let's Encrypt that it's actually who traffic is saying it is, which is our domain name that we configure. So this is what this configuration does. But then, if we start traffic with this and then we change another configuration and we update that and start Docker Compose, Docker is super fast and because Docker is super fast, Docker uh, doesn't keep the same container that was running, it just creates a new one whenever we need to restart it because it's easier to have something that is correct from scratch that trying to configure things like that. That's the benefit of traffic that we can get rid sorry, that's the benefit of Docker that we, we can get rid of all those. It works on my machine because it, it's building everything from scratch, but because the containers are super fast to build and to start, then uh, Docker is just going to remove that and create a new one. But if it creates a new container, then we are going to lose the certificates that we have acquired. So to not lose those certificates, we are saying, hey, Docker, I want you to create this volume, which is a named volume. You can see that it's named because it doesn't start with slash. So it's a named volume. And whenever I put files, any file in the location slash certificates, which is this same location here, I want you to save those files to this named volume. And whenever you restart the container, keep using that same volume. That means that even if we restart traffic, even if we upgrade the version of traffic, it's going to preserve those certificates that we already have. And now uh, we are, because we declared that we are using a volume, then we have to declare the volume here below as well. The same as we did with the configurations for the networks. That's all there is uh, from the side of traffic to enable HTTPS. Now we're going to see what are the changes in the uh, main Docker Compose file. So what we have to do is we have more or less the same configuration we had before. So we had this entry point. We want you to use the entry point H that, that is called HTTP. Now we're saying we want you to use the entry point that is called HTTPS. And we have the same rule that for this domain, we wanted to use uh, this router that is called app HTTPS. So it's just more or less the same configurations. It's just that this one, this one here, is going to be used for HTTPS. And we are saying, hey, traffic, I, for this router, I want you to use TLS, which is the uh, underlying standard and technology uh, to have HTTPS. And because we are saying, hey, I want you to have that encrypted, uh, we have to tell it how to get those certificates. So we're telling it, hey, use the certificate resolver core called LE for Let's Encrypt. Let's actually move this, this file. Let's have this file on one side. And then let's have the traffic file on the other side. Yeah. So now, in Docker Compose traffic, we are saying, hey, I want you to have this certificate resolver called LE for Let's Encrypt. And here, in the Docker Compose file, we're saying, use that certificate resolver. Now, the next thing that we are doing is that uh, because we can configure a bunch of things with labels that are not even in the main uh, traffic Docker Compose stack. In this case, we are creating a middleware in the labels for our stack. This middleware is just going to redirect anything that is not going to HTTPS. We want it to redirect to HTTPS and we want it to do it permanently. With this configuration, we create a new middleware in traffic but we are not using it yet. So with this new line, we are telling uh, traffic that whenever something goes to app to our app on HTTP alone, we want it to be redirected to HTTP. Yes, that's what this configuration does. Great. It's actually a lot of just understanding what the configurations do, but when you see, it's just like a bunch of lines and then you get HTTPS from that. So now the thing that we are going to do because we are going to copy all these files to the remote server again with the same command as before. We just send them. Great. 
And now what we have to do is that we have just to start traffic again. So this is the same command that we had before. We're just saying, hey, hey, update this stack, whatever needs to be done. So Docker Compose will go and check these changes and it's gonna add the new commands that we added and it's gonna add the new volume and all the stuff. So you're just gonna run that. And then the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to also update our stack with this. So this is also the same command again. So this is just gonna run it. Now traffic is gonna go start that. Then we start our backend. The backend is gonna have the labels that say, hey, I need uh, HTTP certificates for this specific domain. Then traffic is gonna read the label and it's gonna say, hey, I now have configurations to go and acquire certificates with Let's Encrypt. So I'm gonna use this domain and I'm gonna get a certificate for this domain. And it's gonna just do all that on the background. We don't have to do anything else more than just setting these configurations. And now, if we go back to the code here, the getting those certificates might take a while, but uh, we can just try. If we reload this page, right now it says that it's not secure. If we reload it, because we added that middleware that added the redirection from HTTP to HTTPS, then this should redirect the, to the URL that uses HTTPS. And we see that it did. Now we have, we are using the URL. You can see that it now has HTTPS. So this redirected to HTTPS. Now we can see that we have the lock and we can check and it says the connection is secure. Yay, this is what we wanted. This is what we uh, got. Uh, from traffic. Now, this is actually the main part of this and uh, it was actually not that difficult. Now we're gonna add this to git add HTTPS. Great, let's close all these files. And now we can actually add a couple of extra things that are just nice to, to have and are gonna be useful. So the first thing that we are gonna do is that we are gonna add the dashboard for traffic. So we are gonna be able to see uh, the, the user interface in the browser for traffic that tells us uh, what are the services that are declaring configurations and everything that is going to be used by traffic. This is very useful for the booking, especially if you have multiple applications with multiple configurations and things. So what we do is, this is the Docker Compose for traffic. We had all the configurations, all these static configurations that we set in traffic is done in the command. So we just add a new static configuration, which is this API that says, hey, I want you to enable the API. And this API includes the dashboard. So this is gonna enable the dashboard. Then these are the static configurations. But remember that we have dynamic configurations that are set in the labels of the other stack. We can also add dynamic configurations in the labels of the same uh, service in the, the same container that is running traffic. So this is actually interesting. That is a same traffic container is adding labels so that the same traffic is going to read those labels and apply those labels to have configurations to expose something that is provided by the same traffic container. Uh, and this is all just done by the same container, by the same traffic. So we are enabling traffic. We are adding the same load balancer, the same thing. Uh, in this case, it's in the port 8080. We are saying the entry point, and we are saying that we want to use this domain, traffic.fastapi with traffic.yangular.com. So we are adding this subdomain, traffic. And we are telling the same configurations. We wanted to use HTTPS. We wanted to use the certificate resolver. We want to use all that stuff. And now we are adding something extra because we don't want everyone that is on the internet to be able to go and see the dashboard that has all our internal configuration. We don't want them to be able to just go and see our configuration. So we are gonna go and add basic auth. Basic auth is the authentication system that is integrated into the browser and that is part of the same HTTP protocol. So that we are gonna have that very, that little window that says, hey, this needs a username and a password. Uh, so we don't have to create a huge front end uh, to say like register here and like uh, add your username and password and stuff. Like we're gonna have the very simple thing, but because this is going through HTTPS, then it's gonna be secure because the password and the username that we send through the network are gonna be 
uh, sent through the encrypted channel using HTTPS. This configuration will actually look like this. Let me comment this and add another version. We could say users, this is gonna be just admin, then colon, and then the hashed password. But we don't want to add the hashed password to, uh, to Git. So we are gonna have this trick here that says, hey, Docker Compose, use the environment variable called username. And if the environment variable is not set, show this error. And for the password, use the environment variable called hashed password. And if the variable is not set, error again. So this is the configuration that we are uh, doing to create this middleware called admin out. And again, as before, as in the same case of the middleware for the HTTPS redirection, we have to use to apply that new middleware. So we are here in this last line, we are applying that middleware. That's all we have to do. Now we can just copy those files to the remote server. And if we try to execute them, let's actually go and try to execute them. We're gonna see that we get an error that says, variable not set because we haven't created the variable for username and hash password so that's what we are going to do next we're going to create a variable for username so we're going to say export username is going to be equal to admin that way we just created the variable for username and for password we are just going to have a very simple password that is just going to be change this for this example you will set the password to whatever you want now we are not using the variable password. We are, we are using a hashed version. So we need to generate this hashed version. To do that, we can use the command OpenSSL. Oops, I didn't copy the right thing. Or I got the connection lost. Yeah, I think I lost the connection there. Let me just create a new terminal and connect to the remote server. So I'm gonna go to the directory again. Cool. I'm gonna again export the variable username. And now I'm gonna export the variable password because we lost that. And now we're gonna use this command. This one. Open SSL, the subcommand password with this configuration. And this is gonna generate this a hash like this. But we need to store this on a variable called hashed password. So we can actually call it like this. So we are saying, let me try to move this a little bit. We are saying export the variable hashed password and the contents of the variable hashed password will be the result of calling this command that uses the previous variable password. That's what we do. And now we have all the variables in place. We can just try again and start our docker compose for traffic so this is going to go and recreate the traffic uh, container with the new configurations but remember that we added this volume here here it is the volume with the certificates so this is going to preserve the previous certificates and it's just going to acquire the new certificates that we need now and now we can just go to the url for, remember that we added this subdomain traffic.fastapiwithtraffic.com we can go there and now we see that it's automatically redirected to HTTPS and we have a certificate and the certificate is valid and everything and we can see all the configurations and we can see that it has HTTP and everything and we can see the other services here now let me show you what uh, does the authentication that we added do let me open a new incognito window and let's open it here so that it doesn't remember the credentials that I added the last time I tried all this. So I'm going to go there and now we see this is the basic authentication that we are talking about. So I'm going to go and say admin, change this, sign in, and it works. That is the basic authentication that we are talking about. So we can protect the application that doesn't necessarily need to have some internal authentication and we can protect it from outside using traffic. I think that's super powerful. I'm gonna show you another example that is gonna 
show how this can be super useful. So a dashboard is going to be the commit of this change. And now what we are going to do is that we are going to, because we created that authentication middleware, we can now reuse it in other places. In our Docker Compose, we're just going to add the same middleware that we created. Just That's the only change that we have to see here. And now we just copy that file to the remote server. And now we can just start our application again, the main Docker Compose, and I can restart it. And now if we go, let's go to the incognito window so that it doesn't remember any passwords that we that I tried before. Now I can go to fast API with traffic.tango.com and now we get basic authentication handled by traffic before getting to our application. Now I can say admin, change this, and we get the response from the API. We can go to docs and we can get the uh, interactive API documentation. But to go to this uh, interactive documentation, the browser has to send those credentials that we created. For FastAPI, you could create an authentication system very easily using all two and like even having a single sign-on or something like that. But for many other applications that don't have integrated authentication, it might be a lot more difficult. But then traffic can do all that work for you, which is very useful. So I'm going to add this basic out. And I'm going to show you another example that I think is very, very cool. So we are going to add a new couple of applications. We're going to have a streamlit application that has all the same configurations and all the same stuff. I'm not going to show you the code on the Docker file, but we can see that it has the same labels and everything, and it doesn't have like any type of authentication internally. And we're also going to add a panel application that will show a bulky visualizations and a Pandas data frame. And we are not adding any internal uh, authentication to that system. We are just going to add, you can see here in this line, we are adding the same middleware that is going to handle basic authentication. This is for Streamlit. And for Panel, we're also adding the same middleware to handle basic authentication. Now we're going to copy this to the remote server. And we're going to start, this is all, this is all on the same stack that we had before. I'm going to start this stack. This is going to take a little bit because it has to build the Streamlit Docker image and it has to build the uh, panel Docker image and they have a bunch of dependencies. So it has to build the images first, then it's going to uh, start the images, which include all the configurations for traffic and all that stuff. But meanwhile, I'm going to show you that this Docker file is the same Docker file, Docker, sorry, this Docker Compose file is the same Docker Compose file that we have before. We have several services. This is what Docker Compose is made for. So you can have several services uh, put together in the same stack. We have the backend, which is the fast API application that we uh, were working with. And now we also have a Streamlit application. And now we also have a panel application. And they are all together on the same stack. We could also have multiple stacks. And because we have a single traffic that is handling all the HTTP certificates, uh, it will be able to handle those multiple stacks uh, in other places too. So we don't even need to uh, put everything on the same file. But for this example, it's easier to just have it on the same file. Now we are just adding all this and we just have a very simple uh, Docker file for Streamlit and a very simple Docker file for Panel. The configurations, the code for Streamlit is just the same sample uh, application uh, that you can see on the Streamlit website. And this day one for panels, also the same sample panel application. You can see more about that here. Streamlit. So we're just going to build a very simple example, like this one. And the one for panel. We're going to have a very simple example, like this one for panel that shows a bulky visualization and has a data frame and has some uh, configurations and some sliders here. This is going to take a while to build because it requires a bunch of dependencies and a bunch of things uh, that need to be there working together. 
but then we're going to be able to see that and uh, these, uh, these systems a panel and string they don't necessarily need to have any type of authentication by themselves they just show the visualization but then we have authentication with traffic on top of them using this basic out trick and because this is everything going through HTTPS it's going to be secure and uh, we're not going to have any problem of sending the password through an insecure connection because it's going through a secure connection let's see this is still going to take a little bit more meanwhile we can just add everything to git add string git and panel and now in this way you can create any type of visualization any type of system uh, that you have that is some type of web application and you can put it on a remote server that other of your colleagues or uh, internal parts of the system or I don't know maybe some final users uh, will be able to access to that application that you created with HTTPS I think I probably lost the connection here let's create another terminal make sure that it's all working so I'm going to go to the directory again and I'm going to run the last command that was Docker Compose actually let's just copy because I don't know if it's there on the history so I'm just going to copy this one and start it again to make sure that ah yeah it had finished and the terminal just died but it doesn't matter because it's running there on the remote server now I can go here to Streamlit, the fast API with traffic.tangolo.com and we get authentication, basic authentication I can say admin, change this, it's the same password that we configured and now we get a Streamlit application that is running on the server we can change stuff here and it's actually executing code on the server and updating the uh, user interface that we get here and the same for panel panel dot fast API with traffic dot triangle dot com this is the thing yeah and we get again the uh, basic authentication I can go admin change this I typed it incorrectly admin change this and now this is gonna go and communicate with panel and we get an interactive panel uh, user interface so we can move here and the pandas data frame is going to update live and we can uh, change the sliders here to update to update the data that is shown we can select other types of data and we can have all this remotely on a server that is secured and working correctly so that's what I have for you thank you very much you can go and check the documentation for FastAPI uh, at this uh, address you can also check more about me and I encourage you to go and check the documentation for traffic and build awesome stuff with traffic because it's really really cool thank you